Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the American Vindictus Show. I'm your host, Doug Ford, and we have with us today Robert Griswold. We're going to do a little bit of an after-action review like we did with Jamie Walden uh, over the weekend's training course, the Active Shooter Awareness and Reaction course that we hosted uh, out there at Ready Made Resources. So thank you very much, Bob, for hosting that for us. And uh, let's just get right down to brass tacks. Bob, what do you think about the course and how it went? Well, I mean, you know, it's always it's always something because you get a cross section of people. Um, you know, we always open it up to our sheriff department and we had one of their deputies on their SRO team come out. And that guy seemed to be pretty squared away. Um, you know, young man. Uh, I, I was quite impressed with him, to tell you the truth. And uh, I, th I hope he learned something. I think he gave some things to the class to, to think about. Um, you know, and uh, he actually extended an invite uh, to us to come back and maybe use some facilities that they have uh, in, in their uh, inventory, such as a empty abandoned house, which that would be an invaluable uh, training tool uh, to use to, to go and, and walk through a house. If there's a bad guy in a house and you got to find him without getting shot or getting uh, or shooting uh, innocent people. You know, I, I really liked the realism that we added, uh, you know, where we had people in there screaming and moaning. Um, you know, that were like injured and but you can't pay attention to them because you've got to deal with the active threat and get that threat out of the way before you can have any kind of uh, EMS services, emergency medical services available for people. Because as long as that guy's still pulling a trigger, he's still injuring people or killing them. Um, and so that that was a good thing. I think we introduced smoke into it. You know, we always presume that the bad guy won't, won't it just brings a gun. But what happens if, if he brought smoke? Um, what happens if he brought uh, pyrotechnics, you know, some type of um, flashbang or other things? I mean, th those are available. And I think we entered we we added that dimension of reality to it, which I don't think people expected that first smoke bomb we popped off. I, I think it was like, whoa, what's going on here? And, and you know, I heard coughing. <laughs> it, it wasn't it wasn't CS gas, it was just plain smoke, but coughing. And, you know, I can't see anybody. And, you know, because it, it put out a volume of smoke. So I, I think it, I think it was really good. I think people walked away with uh, a further understanding of, of, of things. Uh, you know, some of the things we we did address is uh, at at the beginning of class. I said no reloads, and I have that uh, reason. I have that thing for a reason because I've always found out in, in the years I've been uh, doing this kind of training and, and being involved with this type of industry, uh, reloads are manufactured to a much lower standard than new factory ammo. And lo and behold, you know, somebody brought factory reloads, not the ones they did themselves. So we, we needed to clarify that factory reloads. And lo, what we had is a, what's called a squib load. And that's where they put a primer in it, but no powder. And, and it shoots a bullet down the barrel a little bit. The primer has enough power to push it into the barrel. Uh, fortunately, that it didn't push it in the other chamber another round, because then you would have had two rounds backed up and not good things happen. So I, I think the whole class realized that, you know, especially for, for self-defense, don't use reloaded ammunition, you know, get use factory new ammunition. That's a, I think that was a very valuable takeaway. I, I don't think most of those people, except for the sheriff had shot, uh, now Justin had, um, you know, had shot under stress before with somebody yelling at them, you know, get in there, get in there, go through. They wanted to stand at the door. Uh, and, you know, just, you know, shoot from the door. But that's that's the fatal funnel. You know, at that door, you, you're you're prime meat to be shot. And so I, I think we uh, I think a lot of them learned they had to do that, how to clear a room uh, completely without penetrating the room. You know, we always say don't stick your gun past the doorway, because if somebody's, you know, in there and they're standing up against that doorway, they're going to take your gun away from you real quick. Um, so I, 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 I think a lot of it was really good finger discipline. You know, keeping that off the, uh, the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Um, I, I, you know, there's a couple of people there. I don't think it had that kind of training before. Um, you know, uh, you know, one gentleman kept lowering his firearm. And we were pointing out to him, every time you lower your firearm, your opponent's getting two free shots at you while you're lowering your firearm and then regaining target acquisition. So I think overall, a lot of people, uh, people learned a lot of good things. Um, and it's always it's always something to see that. And, and, and I think it's a message also to the people who sit at home and think, you know, I'm you know, I'm this ultimate marksman. I don't train. I don't practice. I might I might stand around and shoot paper targets, not moving. But when you add stress, um, you know, a, a confusing element like smoke, 
uh, and, and and the possibility because we're using airsoft, so people were shooting back. When you add all those elements together, you know Johnny Paper Shooter doesn't do too good. Um, it, it's easy to stand there and and shoot paper. It's kind of like putting the keys in your car in the driveway and turning the car on and just pretend like you're driving, but your engine's running, but you're not going anywhere, so you don't have to navigate the road, make make turns, you know, wait for the guy texting that's ready to crash into you. All those dynamics that you face on the road when you're really driving, you know, sitting in a driveway with a car running is, is completely different. You both both have a car involved, both have running cars involved, but one is uh, actually interfacing with uh, you know, a lot of complex things going on, and the other one's just sitting in his driveway. Well, Johnny Paper Shooter just sits in the driveway, you know, I man, I look at that. I got a, a you know, a half inch group, and you know, well, that doesn't matter. Um, can, can you under stress? Do the same thing. Can you, when you're moving, because standing still targets get shot, can you, uh, when you're moving, uh, still do that one half inch group? Not too many people can. Um, do you know how to fight through? I mean, you know, you don't sit there and go, oh, I got hit. You don't stop. You know, time out. You, you know, you have to fight through it. I think a lot of people learn that. And so the, the, the real takeaway from it is nothing beats realistic training. And I think you and Jamie brought that to the table. Realistic training, realistic stress. You know, um, we could have thrown firecrackers at them, which I've thought about afterwards, you know, throwing a pack of firecrackers in there while they're trying to shoot. We've done that before. And, you know, just start have those going off and a further distraction. Uh, next time, I think we should incorporate that in there. Just get along, you know, 100 pack of firecrackers, light it, throw it in there while, while they have to go in. And all of a sudden, all these bangs and noises are going off and add another further stress to it. Um, but I, I think that's really what we took away from it is that unless you're doing this and doing it on a regular basis, you know, just taking the course one time, you know, in your life doesn't, doesn't qualify you, uh, real people who do this, uh, have to do it regularly. And, and we, we see this society becoming more and more violent. I mean, I, I, I tell you, my heart grieves. I'm a fellow Tennessean and I, I just see this Christian lady who was just brutally raped and murdered. Um, you know, uh, I just think what happens if she'd been armed? What happens if she'd been trained to face a threat? You know, um, if, if just that millisecond she had, she'd had a gun on her waist because Tennessee, we can open carry, you know, she'd had a gun and, and she'd popped that guy, you know, um, he, he wouldn't, it wouldn't have been a, been, it'd have been a totally different outcome. Um, you know, so the, the, that lack of training, that lack of preparedness, that lack of situational awareness, the lack of a threat assessment. Um, it really is fatal in this society. I mean, you know, the lady in no way is at fault. Um, when you have a brutal monster that has been left out of jail time and time and time again, who's been convicted of sexual assault, kidnapping, and, and a host of other charges, you know, when, when he's been let out, it, it's the state's fault that let him out. Um, but, you know, you have to say, what kind of threat assessment do I have when I'm jogging at 4.30 in the morning? It's dark out. Um, you know, that's, that's a higher threat assessment. I would say that to women, you know, all over everywhere to make that threat assessment that we no longer live in a society. You know, you ladies, I'm speaking to you ladies specifically right now. You live in a society where over 50% of men daily download daily. And any the problem is not just, I'm going to put unclothed women. It's demeaning, dehumanizing uh, types of things they show and, and people watch. So you have guys that have just saturate over this over and over and over and over again. It just happened up in Knoxville after you left. Fortunately, some guys came and helped the woman out, but uh, a guy tried to abduct a woman um, and, and to sexual. He'd been guilty of sexual assault before, and he tried to. Uh, he was charged with uh, you know attempted sexual assault, kidnapping. So, I mean, it's it's happening everywhere, Doug. And this is why your class is so important. We're, we're going to host it again and sometime, you know, first, second week of November. And even the people who took it, um, it, it they, they will get more out of it if they come again. I, I would say they'll get as much or more out of it the next time because they'll learn what they've learned they can build upon. I mean, you can only absorb so much and you gave them a lot of stuff. So they come back and they learn more. They, they build upon what they've built upon. And, and the people who've never taken a course like this before, 
I just strongly suggest you come and take it. We only have 20 slots. That's all we can what we can effectively teach at one time. 20 people. Um, you know, so if you want that, um, you know, you can contact us. We'll have it up on our website in the next day or so. Uh, we can actually just log in and click and pay for it and and, and come and take the course. Um, the Airsoft gives a, a very realism, um, you know, that you, you can feel the ping of the, um, you look like a little uh, bumblebee sting when you were done. Um, you know, you look like you've been playing with my, my, my bees without any suit on. You had stings all over you. Uh, you know, we, the, the guys that are doing it are wearing a heavy jacket and pants and uh, neck neck protection and eye prote head protection. So, you know, they're pretty well protected, but they still felt the, the, the little stings of the BBs coming out. Um, and, and so that's what I take away from it. I, I look at a violent society. I look at a society that is swirling down into degeneracy, no respect for life, no respect for a woman's, um, you know, whatever you say, her sacredness you know or sanctity they, they look at their sex objects to some people out there and that's all they look at them and any target that would would present itself they're going to exploit that target um and so it, it just says get trained get trained get trained my wife teaches martial arts uh she has a dojo where she teaches that, and that's one of the things she she tells is to be aware of your environment um know your six uh and and we probably you know you're if you have that I, I don't know what her situation is but women are, are running with you know the earplugs in the ear earbuds running so they're not paying attention audibly to their environment uh, they can't hear a car pulling up behind them if they have those in they're they're focused and and I think that class really uh, opened a lot of people's eyes to the fact that you really need to be paying attention in this day and time you gave a wonderful stats in the classroom part of it. Uh, of the class, uh, the wonderful stats about just the rate of crime in this country is going insane. I mean, it is insane. And, and you weren't pulling these statistics out of your hat. These are FBI statistics of showing how violent crime in this country is just skyrocketing. It's like it's like the federal deficit. It's going up almost at a vertical peak. Uh, we can't go a day without seeing people raped, murdered, beaten, plundered, robbed. Um, and, and so again, that was my takeaway. Yeah. On the, uh, the stats part. <clears throat> so the first day of the course, the half day of the course is a, it's a PowerPoint. Once again, it's a, it's a corporate level style PowerPoint. So, you know, it's kind of dry. It's filled with stats and facts and then historical content. Uh, but all that is really to bring to mind just how important it is for people to understand that the active shooter, the active killer is what we really would like to say. The active killer scenario is increasing from 2017 to 2022. It has increased over 1,000%. Now, being that that is an FBI statistic. Say, say, say that again. Say that again. It's increased over 1,000%. And what has increased over 1,000%? Active shooters. Active shooters. I mean, you're that means you're 10 times more likely to face an active shooter today than you were just a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, if that trend continues, and in a few more years, you're again that stat is another thousand percent. I, I mean, that's the trend of society. What I notice is, you know, if you took a, a city like Memphis, that's where that lady was uh, from. Memphis used to be just one of the jewels of Tennessee. Uh, it was beautiful. It, it's actually a beautiful geographic location. I mean, it's right on the Mississippi River. It's just gorgeous. I've been there. It's gorgeous. But if I were driving downtown Memphis and after hours, I would not stop in any traffic lights. I, I wouldn't be driving down there after hours to begin with, but I wouldn't stop at any traffic lights, stop signs, nothing. I am just going to keep going. If the road was blocked with cars, I would keep going. Um, I, I can always buy a new car once I'm jacked and shot and beaten to death and kicked, kick, kicked or stomped to death. You know, I can't buy another car. Um, so I'm just going to keep going. That's how violent that city's become, because the, according to the FBI, that has become the most violent city in America. It has twice the level of violence to say San Antonio, where you live. San Antonio has twice the people, but it has twice the violence. Uh, you know, uh, I think it was 800 uh, was uh, gosh, no, it was about 400 murders there last year. Uh, in, in Memphis, and there's only half that much in San Antonio. 
Texas, uh, 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 you know, um, a city that has twice the population. So, uh, but we're seeing these concentric circles of cities. The violence keeps spreading out from them. And so they go from the city to the suburbs and then they go and then it goes to another city and, and it just keeps spreading and spreading and spreading. Um, and if this isn't stopped, um, it is going to affect every corner of America. And now we live in Tennessee. You live in Texas. We are right to carry states. Uh, you know, we don't have a constitutional carry. So, you know, we have that safety mechanism that allows, you know, me to defend myself. So if, if somebody tries to jack my car or, you know, rape my wife or hurt my children, I have the right to shoot them and, and stop that act of violence. Because, you know, the, the, the deputy that was in our class uh, actually said, well, I think he said, you know, response time to an active shooter at a school would be about 20 minutes for the police to actually get, get the assets on site um, to, to do that. And then, you know, they're going to have to do a threat assessment of what's going on and then make penetration into the building and try to stop the active shooter. Um, you know, if there's an armed person in there, which there should be, they have the ability to take out that shooter immediately. And we saw that happen in that mall scenario where the guy shot that guy at 40 yards. A couple of people died, but there probably been a 12 to 15, maybe more body count before law enforcement could have stopped that. And so, you know, in states where we see constitutional carrier, the ability to get a carry permit, you know, we, we're not seeing as much of that. That lady in Memphis, I, I would say she was she was profiled. Um, criminals are smart enough to know, do a profile on people. They drive around, look for patterns of life, patterns of life being those things that you do over and over and over again. You know, he might have driven down that road a lot of times and seen that lady several times jogging there, made a mental note. Well, she jogs Monday, Wednesday and Friday, whatever. And, you know, she's out four, four thirty and then, you know, made that pattern of life assessment and came back and then did what he did uh, to her. So, um, you know, it just behooves us all to to take our, our personal security a little more serious. Uh, that thousand percent is a real figure. That thousand percent represents coffins. That's what it represents. You know, and, and to say, well, more gun control is needed. Well, we look at Canada. Uh, well, they just had 15 people stabbed. Ten, I mean, 25 people stabbed, 15 injured, 10 dead. Or is it, the, it was one or the other. I forgot. 10, 10 dead. 10 and that was on the fourth. And then, did you see that what happened? The, that was the last day of training that that happened, too. Yeah, did you see what just happened in London? They had a melee breakout with machetes. People, a hundred people with machetes were hacking on each other. Now, uh, again, we understand in London that, I don't know, did you see that, Doug? Yeah. Machete, a hundred machetes. People were fighting a hundred machetes. Um, I mean, you know, so the gun's not the issue. It's not the issue at all. I mean, no. you know, you give people hundred machetes. I good grief, that's going to be a blood fest. Wherever uh, there, wherever there are people, there is violence and there is murder. Yes. Period. So, I mean, you know, before the gun was invented, a lot of people died in war, um, and and that that machete attack just just proves it. I mean, so uh, again, we're living in this more and more violent society, and on top of that, so let's just let's just do this tiered thing. So we have this one tier of violence increasing. We we talked about before a possible railroad strike coming. So you have a society that's being given over to violence, a reprobate society, a society that no longer knows good from bad. You know, they, they just, whatever's good is what benefits them. Whatever's bad is what harms them. That's their sense of morality. If it, if, if it makes me feel good, if it adds to me, it's good. If in any way it takes away from me or makes me feel bad or doesn't bring me pleasure, then it's no good. And and that's what the definition of basically a reprobate is. Doesn't know what's good or bad or whatever. And we see this, this society that's being turned over to being reprobate. So what happens when um, we see goods and services? If 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 there is a rail strike, I think it's uh, ten days from now when it's potentially going to happen. Um, and we really have some shortages happen. I mean, Europe is going to face those shortages. They're they're facing not being able to heat their home. Um, they're, they're gathering firewood. Uh, Poland is gathering line for coal. 
I, I mean, you know, they're having to switch back because they 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 set themselves up for this. Donald Trump warned them about it, um, about setting themselves up just with Russian gas and not developing their own sources outside of that. Uh, you know, we, we're doing it now where the price of our gas has spiked, gone up and people can't afford it. Groceries have gone up dramatically. And so when you have this society that's been given over to violence and being reprobate, and then you take away the ability of people to buy the needs that they have. Uh, Doug, what do you think people are going to do? People are going to freak out when they don't have what they need and they're going to go get it. You know, and, right right now, our government is saying that Russia is weaponizing energy by shutting down Nordstrom one uh, pipeline. What the heck did you, what the heck did Joe Biden do when he shut down the pipeline? He weaponized energy. Joe and you know, King we are we are still buying Russian oil through India. I don't know if you saw that story. The Indians are buying it from Russia, and we're buying it from the Indians. So here's this thing. The Indians are going to step on it, meaning they're going to put a profit on it. So we're actually paying more than if we were buying it directly from the Russians. But in order to be sanctimonious, you know, we allow the Russians to sell it to the Indians. And then if the Russians charge them $50 a barrel, the Indians sell it to us for $60 a barrel, but we're still using Russian oil. I mean... It, words escape me. Words escape me to, to describe that, to describe that scenario. Well, here, here's one thing people don't understand is, uh, as I'm looking on Epoch uh, Times right now, Epoch News Times, uh, spiraling energy bills risk driving tens of thousands of UK businesses out of business. When the power goes out and you can't afford to keep the lights on, your job is now done. Where are you going to go get a new job at? Cutting firewood? You know, good luck. People don't take these things into consideration. You, When you mess with people who give you your own power, they can yank it, and they can completely uh, submarine your entire economy. And the, the prolapse of that is that civilization is reliant upon energy. They're reliant upon their jobs and the monthly income, which gives the housing, you know, Obviously, the ability to feed their family and put gas in their car. And uh, and when that's not there, people will go out and find the next thing. Most likely, it'll be prostitution. It'll be gang-related. It'll be criminality-related. It'll drugs. be pushing drugs. That's always a big thing, pushing drugs. Making uh, illegal booze is another one. Or making illegal firearms. Because now things have gotten so out of hand, we're having uh, gangs of New York-style machete fights in the street. People are going to start producing their own firearms. I don't blame you if you do at that point. You know, Bob, we're this close. We're this close in our own country from the average American not having a plausible answer for how to put food on the table the following month. Do I do food or do I do bills or do I do my uh, my mortgage, my electric bill? You know, you, you're you're getting we're getting close with the economy, but we also have King Joe Biden in charge who thinks he can just shut down the world whenever he feels like it. And then obviously, you know, recently with him standing in front of the whole red uh, background, <laughs> this man literally claiming half the country as as terrorism is just shocking to me because he's giving excuse to violence. He's giving excuse to uh, government overreach, and it's all, it always blows back in people's faces every time they do this. You know, let them eat cake. Well, whenever you let them have their tea and their cake, then they start to cut people's heads off because they don't stop. The whole yeah. French Revolution should, you know, the, how many different French Revolutions do we need for the world to finally realize maybe government and the people should learn to, like, cohabitate and work together, if not, one persecutes and destroys the other, and then the other one persecutes and destroys the other. And nobody wins. Everybody dies. Everybody suffers. Yes. Civilization comes apart. You know, that's what happened at the fall of Rome. Civilization came apart. Rome was the glue that held the Western civilization together. When it fell apart, they went into the Dark Ages. Um, and, and, you know, that has the potential to happen right now. We see all the elements of Dark Ages Coming upon upon us, education is no longer education. People aren't learning higher science. They're not learning, you know, art literature, you know, all the all the higher thinking um, 
courses. I mean, interpretive dance, gender studies, uh, all this garbage stuff that does absolutely nothing but for humanity. Nothing. And so we're learning garbage education. Uh, we're eating garbage food. We're eating, taking garbage medicine. Uh, we have just everything is just falling apart the seams. I think it's the Antichrist Empire. That's my my view on it. That we're facing this great reset, great uh, great tribulation, um, and that's what the, all this is being driven to. It's to drive us to the point where this society breaks and they can re-implement their communist, socialist, uh, Marxist utopia. Uh, where you have to kill half the population because they disagree with you. Um, uh, in my opinion, Joe Biden, uh, with his speech the other day, or Herr Biden, um, what he did is he basically set the groundwork for when the Republicans win in November. He's going to say, well, these people don't represent the Constitution. They don't represent democracy. We've demonized them, so we can't allow them to take control of the government. You don't think that's going to happen? I do think it's going to happen. I think I think they're gonna they're gonna absolutely you do everything they can do to prevent a c conservative Congress from being seated. Um, the the riots in the street we've not seen anything yet. The the assaults the the I mean the, the race back and forth you know that they they've so inflammatized race in this country that you know you have major people on both sides to think that the other one hates them. We need to kill them. I mean, that's what they've done. Um, and it's it's a sad thing. It's really a sad thing. I mean, you know, you and I both trained with Asian people, black people, um, Native American people, white people. And when, you, when we get together, you know, we, we all have a good time together, sit around the campfire and tell, tell each other a bunch of stories. Um, but, you know, they, they have so inflamed the people that I'm sure that guy who attacked that white one and killed her probably didn't even look at her as a human being. I mean, you know, it's just it's been so inflamed by the Democratic Party this hatred that when it does break apart, it's going to be everybody for themselves. And then the nation just swirls down into absolute anarchy. And then they come in with their totalitarian state and implement the great reset. Um, and, you know, all these, you know, I, I, I don't know, you know, we see these major distribution warehouses laying empty. I wonder what they're using them for, um, you know, chain link fences around them, but nobody, nothing's in there. What are they, what are they going to use them for? Um, I, I got a pretty good idea, you know. And on top of that, Doug, uh, there's there's uh, Adderall shortages. There's there's there are all these psychotropic drug shortages I, right I, now that people have gotten so. Uh, I wonder. Adderall's I wanted to, addictive. I wanted to speak know? about that. All the psychotropic drugs that people take in America, they come from China. Could you imagine? China just withholds two months of those drugs. What, uh, you, would have, would you would have you would have a zombie country. apocalypse. It would be right. a zombie apocalypse. I mean, I'm not joking. I've seen one person go through withdrawals, and I mean, it, it's 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 unbelievable what what the body goes through when it, when when the brain, all the dopamine in the brain, has a, a been accustomed to that type of stimulation, and it goes away. Now, I forgot the lady's name, but she wrote a book called The Dopamine Nation. We were talking about it, and you know, when when this is normal state. The pain, between pain and pleasure. You know, that's where we're supposed to be right here. We all want the pleasure, but there's always pain in life. There's always an equilibrium. So we're here. That's how we operate normally. There's there's a consequence and a reward, okay? So this stays in balance, and then humanity works well. But when you stimulate the pleasure part, you know, entertainment, drugs, alcohol, sex, that, and this becomes the reality that pleasure is always up here and pain is here, you've created an unequal dynamic there. And so when all of a sudden the society can no longer have the pleasure button pushed and it does this, that that that, that does not happen without violence. That does not happen without a lot of psychological and physical pain. And that's where our society's at right now. We're, we've been stimulated with the pleasure thing way up here and it's gonna come crashing down to seek equilibrium again. And when it does, it usually dips and goes way down uh, until it can e e e reach equilibrium again. And when that happens in any society, you're going to have a society that comes unglued at the seams. Uh, you know, I don't believe in the real kind of zombies, but it, it's, it'll be as close to a zombie apocalypse as you can get because people are going to be so desperate 
because their, their brains are adjusting to a, to a, a situation that is very painful to adjust to. Uh, as the as the drug addict, they're, they're all those dopamine receptors in their brains have been overstimulated one way or another, and they become so dependent on that stimulation. Those those and then all of a sudden it's gone. That's what creates the body quivers. That's what creates the sweats, the palpitation, the blood pressure skyrocketing, the anger, all the, that's what all stimulated that when you take somebody off a drug and, and you keep in mind, one in four Americans is chemically altered in this country, alcohol, you know, stimulants, uh, benzos, opiates, marijuana, whatever it is, you know, uh, sex addicts, food addicts, what, whatever it is. You know they they've been overstimulated, and then when 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 it's forced upon them to come back to reality, Doug, it is not going to be pretty. This is why we need to prepare. This is why you need to come to your class um, and learn how to deal with people that are that. As a Christian person, I don't want to fight the government. I don't want to shoot people. I don't want to do any of those things. I want to, I want to live my life, raise my children, and now grandchildren, great grandchildren. You know, we're going to go to splash country and have a good time with them in a couple of weeks. That's what I want to do. I don't want to, I don't want to have to deal with this insanity that's going on, but I, I do know that it is happening. And, and I'm glad to have brothers like you and Jamie around that can teach these kind of tactics and, and say, you know, this is what you do. What do you do if you're in a building and all of a sudden you have an active shooter? What do you do? You know, if I was with my children or grandchildren, I'm not going to try to exfil the building. If, if I'm by myself, I might try going to the, where the fight's at. You know, and then how do I go in there without getting shot? Do I just rush in? Like, what does it say? Uh, angels, uh, fools rush in where angels fear to tread. And that's all you can do. You have a chance. So, uh, again, going circling back to your, your, um, your course, all the scenarios we've talked about, you know, uh, of collapse, of people coming off drugs, of the entertainment going away, all these things, um, you know, as we see it, the level of violence, the level of agitation is going to go up um, as we readjust to a normal society, which we're in a very, very abnormal society today. Uh, when we have to adjust to it, it's not going to be pretty. So, you know, getting getting prepared is going to allow you to help mitigate this you know, I don't want to be at the supermarket when people are fighting for food. I, I don't want to be in the desert when, you know, maybe the water gets shut off because Lake Power runs out of water or whatever, or it's severely rationed. You know, I, I don't want to be the guy unarmed when, you know, the, the, the Adderall addicts and the opiate addicts and all these other people who've been so used to being overstimulated just start wigging out because they can't get their drugs. And they, they seek to take it out in violence. I don't want to be I don't want to be there. I want to know how to deal with it. And, and so that's why. I do what I do. That's why you do what you do. It, you know, we we make our living. Doug makes his living this way, guys. He, he I mean, he, he he he's not related to Bill Gates or somebody who gives give, gives him. You know, he doesn't get a uh, what is it a George Soros check. Um, you know, but so you know, support him, and you'll learn a lot of good things. Um, and, and at the same time, you're you're going to protect your family by doing it. So it's a win win so solution. Doug wins, you win. Um, you support me, I win, you win. You know, support Jamie, he wins, you you win. Um, and, and so that that's why I think we're at right now. Uh, I, Doug, I, I agree with you. I, I, I don't even say that far. I, I'd say that far. Um, this society is rapidly losing its coherency. Um, I would say we are already in a de facto state of civil war. I watched all the news media, except for Fox, say, you know, Biden didn't go far enough. Kill mm -hmm. those rotten Christians. Mm -hmm. You know, those horrible people. McCabe, your former FBI guy, he didn't go far enough. I mean, how far would be far enough, Mr. McCabe? How far would be far enough for somebody who has a different political view, a, mag, a MAGA, you know, supporter? I believe in make America great again. I believe in, you know, creating jobs at home, developing energy sources at home, you know, spending money responsibly, you know, giving Americans their freedom back, deregulating business. Yeah. You know, what would you want to do to me? Well, let me give you some historical context for this. Um, Nazi Germany was not going to go as far as they originally did. Nazi Germany originally was trying to take the, uh, the Jewish people out of their country forcefully, uh, stealing and robbing and killing as they do it. 
And then they tried giving the Jews to Spain. Spain said no. To England, England said no. To America, America said no. And so Adolf Hitler said that he needed a final solution. And Adolf Hitler did not create the final solution. Adolf Hitler's government heads of state created the final solution. It was the SS and the lawyers and the law enforcement who actually created the final solution carried out by law enforcement after the Nuremberg laws made it legal for people of Jewish descent, Jewish blood, to then be completely stripped of all rights and humanity. Uh, I think they were actually called a uh, untermensch. It's a, it means something like under man. Like, yeah. you know, they're not, they're not man anymore. They're not, they weren't considered to be people anymore. Uh, the Nazi scientists actually considered whenever they were writing on their papers, they wrote the uh, certain Jewish patients down and, and patients a really bad word, but that's the way it's historically wrote in context. Yeah. They, they wrote them down as animals. And yeah. whenever they were interviewed, by OSS and then by British intelligence, they they still said, "Oh no, they were animals." Like, no, they were people. Well, to you, they're people. To us, they were animals. See, that's what happens when you give too much power to insane, crazy, diabolical people who do not have God in mind, who do not have Jesus in their heart, and they view everything and anything under them. You know, this is the rate that we're going in this world. It's not going to go backwards. Our Lord even says it in Matthew 24, it's going to get worse. You're not going to pray and wake up tomorrow when everything's going to be hunky-dory and rainbows and hugs. That's not reality. And for those of you who live in that reality, you know, take the VR glasses off. The reality is crime and, and violent crime has increased a thousand percent in five years, a thousand percent, and it's going to climb. And let me, let me speak on that. Those were very conservative numbers. They only considered mass shootings of four people or more that were shot at the scene. So it didn't include the two people that were shot, one person shot by another person, or three persons shot. It was only four people or more. So add in all the other numbers. It's probably close to 1,500%. I want to speak about something else real quick. The guy from uh, Memphis who, who just recently murdered that woman. Uh, he is being blocked on bail, so he's not going to be allowed to make bail. However, in New York, he would have been allowed to make bail. However, the parole board is making a decision on wanting to release the Saskatchewan stabbing suspects back into the populace until it's time for them to have a hearing. Okay, I want to say that again. Two guys, two brothers who were on the Cree Nation, uh, Native American uh, area, who almost killed 25 people. They killed 10, stabbed 15, are going to be released back into the populace. Does that sound like a normal world to you? Does that sound like a world with justice anymore? We are, we are living in a time that if you don't get your head out of the sand, if you don't start training, you don't have to go to my training. You can go to someone else's training. All I can tell you is that you're not going to find anyone else who is going to give you three 12-hour days of training for $200 a day. You're not going to find it. The government's not going to find it. State and local law enforcement's not going to find it because guys like me charge the hell out of those industries because they have the money to pay for it. We're doing this. It, literally, it just covers the cost of going there. And then the, the cost of the materials, all right? So we're not exactly making a fortune doing this. We're doing this because it's out of the heart that we feel that it's time to give back to the society that we have protected and live amongst and to help you protect yourself. Uh, speaking on the training, the next training evolution series, we're going to include nighttime shooting. Uh, we're going to take out the live fire portion so that we have an extra day of just pure tactics and honestly, we don't need the live fire portion. The airsoft is, is plenty well enough. For everyone who went through the training, you went through the training while it was raining, while the smoke was going, while, the, while it was super humid, uh, while it was hot. We were all sweating, but you did it during the daytime. Tactics change 100% at night. You have to go slow. 
you're you're not going to see into the depth of the room as you did as you did last time. And we're going to change things up. We're going to include a lot more medical stuff. And we're going to make this a little harder, a little more challenging. But the harder and more challenging it is now in uh, scenario based training, the more the realism comes whenever you're faced with that next active threat. It could be an active shooter. It could be an active killer. It could be an active stabbing. It could be a, a home invasion. You know, it could be a domestic disturbance that turns into a shooting. That stuff happens. Uh, you know, one of the things Jamie and I want to make sure people know, we're not, this isn't a shooting course. You know, th that's not what this is. Go to those guys. Get your flat range time. You know, BZO your rifles before you go there. Make sure that you, you're, you're getting the trigger time that you need with the rifles that you're employing. We are asking you to employ your brain, which is one part that everyone leaves out of the shopping basket when they go to Cabela's and they pick up $2,000 worth of shopping uh, of, of tactical gear. They forget the common sense training that goes with all that stuff. And that's how people get killed. They don't know how to walk into a room correctly. Three quarters of the guys that showed up, and thank you to every single one of those guys who showed up. The 13 of you who showed up was, you know, I mean, we had, you know, seven or more seats left. You know, so the, the guys who showed up gave 100% uh, all the effort that they could. Uh, they gave us all their attention. There wasn't any, uh, you know, complaining. There wasn't any, uh, you know, woe is me. All those guys, they showed up, they shut up, and they trained. And that's what we want to look at as instructors because that's when you get the most training out of it. And uh, I just want to say that, you know, what those guys picked up with their skills, with what they learned, will be the last thing that they fall back on whenever they get into that next dangerous situation. And like I said, it doesn't have to be active shooter related. We're, we're coming at this from a all hands approach of a threat environment, a dangerous environment. You know, this could be the floodwaters, the tornado after a hurricane, you know, anytime after a natural disaster, crime, crime spree will go up within the local populace. That, that always happens. Just like with riots, the crimes go up. I, if I didn't have the time to show how many different videos I had of everyday average people being yanked out of their car by Antifa and Black Lives Matter and being stomped to death. I want to I want the, the pause for effect. People were being yanked out of their car from a peaceful protest and being stomped to death. We just saw that pit maneuver that criminal did in New York. Yep. I mean, these people are learning pit maneuvers. And he did it quite effectively. And then he went out and armed robbed that person. You know, we have a poster in our training center that says, the more you sweat in times of peace, the less you bleed in times of war. I, I, I know Schwarzkopf quoted it, but I think it goes way beyond before him. But just that, that we, and we did sweat this weekend. The more you sweat in times of peace, meaning you're training, the less you bleed in times of war. You know, I mean, for the average person who would just run into a room, they're going to get shot. If you didn't learn how to pie that room, you know, you're gonna have you reduce your chances of getting shot dramatically and being able to put lead on the on the on the target that is posing the threat. So uh, again, coming to a class like this is invaluable. And is and if we see another, <clears throat> you know, Doug, it took five years to go up a thousand percent. I would say it'll take half that time to go up another thousand percent because yes. violence is not a static thing, violence increases. The nope. society is it's given over to more and more violence. More and more people become violent, and you see more acts of violence. I cannot believe the level of violence in this society today, where when I was a kid, we might be seeing one act of violence, like we see that, that brutal rape and murder, in 10 years. That was, that was something like that, or a mass shooting. I don't even remember a mass shooting. There was Charles Whitman. Um, that was the first one. But I, I, yeah, I still don't even remember that. I was a little kid. But you, you, we went most of my childhood and teenage years no mass shootings whatsoever. None. Now it's just like you expect them every day. And it might not be a mass shooting. It might be a mass, a knife attack uh, or machete attack. Um, you know, so it's coming at us at different things. And again, this is why, you know, um, they've already told, we already see the food supply being destroyed. Uh, we already see, I just saw another advertisement for crickets for sale. Uh, boxed crickets. You can go to your grocery store and buy boxed crickets uh, and, and eat those. You know, I guess a little mustard on them or something. Um, you know, um, mayonnaise, whatever. 
and so we see that our food supply being taken from us. We see our energy being taken from us. We definitely see our morals being taken from us. Um, we see a nation that's been, you know, dr drugged into just an altered state of reality. And now we see this level of violence just, I mean, spiraling upward at, at, at a rate I can't believe. It grieves me. I mean, that, that, you know, those people, my brothers and sisters in the Lord, that, that lady, um, the, the father and the two children that are remaining behind, they're my brothers and sisters in the Lord. You know, I, man, I can't imagine. You met my wife. I love that woman so dearly. I can't even imagine my life without her. Um, I would, I mean, there, I would lay my life down a thousand times to protect her. You know, I can't imagine what that man's going through right now. Two little children to raise. And perhaps if more Christian churches, and you know, if I was a Christian pastor of a Christian church, I'd bring you there and host it in my church. I'd want all, I definitely want my security detail in my church to, to do a thing. And that speaks volumes in and of itself that a church has to have a security detail. That's, I mean, that's unbelievable. It was a, you know, when I was a, church a kid, my, have to, we have to have armed people in our church. There's a church in my area that they, uh, they actually have active patrols of guys walking around with the uh, uh, vertex style bags, the, the carry concealed yeah. bags for rifles. Four guys in that church with rifles as soon as you walk in. Yeah. People out in the parking lot just, you know, doing security in the parking lot. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's just, it was inconceivable, inconceivable when I was a, a younger, but it's become part of our world today and we're going to have to deal with it. But I, I don't want to see any more brothers, Christian brothers and sisters, or, but by the way, anybody at all, I, I, even my worst enemy, I don't want to see him drug out of a car and raped or drug into a car and raped um, and beaten and murdered. Uh, but there, there are ways to prevent that. And again, there are ways to, as we, as we see the supply chain in this country break down, as we see the energy chain in this country break down, definitely the family chain in this country has broken down. Um, you know, we can do things right now with a little bitty window we have left um, to help mitigate those. Because if you don't, I, I can tell you, if you think Doug and I are f pushing fear porn or whatever they call it anymore, if you think that's what we're doing, just go ahead and ignore us, turn the channel off, go, go watch, you know, happy day reruns or something. I don't know, you know? Um, but if, if, if you think like I do that there's a God in heaven who brings judgment on nations that sin, that murder their children, that, that, that break the sanctity of marriage, all, all these things that we see going on. If you think there's a God in heaven that brings judgment on those things, then lo and behold, what are you going to do? I mean, no one knew judgment was coming. Joseph knew judgment was coming and they did something. If you ignore it right now and just say, well, you know, I'm going to go about my life. Who's, what, what, who's playing tonight? The Steelers playing or is it, you know, whatever, yada, 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 you know, um, whatever, you know, um, if, if that's your life, then, you know, when when it goes bad, at, well, put it this way, as it gets worse, because it's already bad, as it gets worse, you know, and, and, and the final uh, linchpin is pulled out of the society and it just swirls down and you see Kenosha happen nationwide. Um, sorry. As you see Kenosha happen notion, nationwide with burnings, lootings, you know, pillaging, raping, b murder. Um, and we do see those concentric circles building out from the cities today. Every major city, every major city in the United States has this issue going on. Lawlessness. It's just it, it's there. Um, parts of the city you can't drive down. You know, they, they, they actually, the, 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 the whack job liberal media was saying, well, that woman shouldn't have been out doing that. So that's become the new normal, restricting good people's behavior because of what bad people do. Why don't we restrict the bad people? And put him in prison forever. That guy should have been in prison forever. Um, for his already his background, kidnapping, sexual assault, those things were already in his background. He should have been one in prison. That lady shouldn't be have to do that, even though she she should have done it. It, it shouldn't, you know, the, the good people in society shouldn't be forced to comply to the bad people. And that's what we see going on right now. And it's spreading out from the cities. Gang violence is spreading out from the cities. Um, just everywhere, lawlessness abounds. Get ready, ladies and gentlemen, because I, I do believe between now and the election or at the election, we're going to see some pretty bad things happen. That's the Sask one of the Saskatchewan, um, stabbers, one of the Saskatchewan killers 
have been arrested 59 times for assaults, assaults on law enforcement officers, uh, and still found his way back into the public and is about to be released back into the public. You know, I'd, Canada, you uh, you guys better get ready. Your country is is on the path of destruction, and America, we're right behind it. You know, we're we're not any better. I would like to end by saying that all these situations we've talked about with the stats that I was showing uh, for the uh, active shooter PowerPoint, they're all driven by politics, politics, race, ideological reasons, religious extremist reasons. Uh, but the one thing that is occurring that uh, is actually the most disturbing trend to the FBI and Department of Justice, as they note it, is that the increase in random active shootings, the randoms are the hardest thing for law enforcement or for anybody really uh, to get their mind around, because that means I can kill one person here and drive five miles on the road and kill another person. And next thing you know, you know, your crime scene is a county long or two counties long. So it's not it's not the guy who got fired and feels jilted by by uh, the company and goes and takes it out inside the company. These are people that just want to stack up a body count so they can drive to, to the, you know, this fast food restaurant, shoot some people there, go down to the next fast food restaurant, shoot some people there, go into Walmart, shoot some people there and, and, and just just for the fun of it. I mean, and people are doing it for the fun of it. No, no other reason than just to get the excitement out of shooting people. Um, yep. So stay armed, you know, stay frosty, get, get trained, get trained, learn how to deal with it. You know, one of the things I always do when I go into a building, I, I was in a building today, you know, I had to go by Walmart, pick something up. I know where the exits are in my Walmart in, in Madisonville. I know where the exits are at. I know how to exfil that building and not through the front door. You know, they have exits going out. They have loading, they have loading docks in the back. And they have other exits to get out of there. Um, you know where those exits are at whenever you're something. If you're going to the movies, know where your exits are at. Um, you know, know how to get out of a building. If I'm in the mall, I know where the exits are at. Just so you can maneuver that thing and you can get out of harm's path if you need to. Um, if you're in a car, I mean, good grief. Don't ever give up your car. You got two, three, four, five, six thousand pounds. My Dodge weighs nine thousand pounds, you know. <laughs> That's a that's a nice little thing. 440 horsepower at 9,000 pounds. Yeah, I'll take that any day. You know, and if I have to wreck the car to stay alive, I'll wreck my truck to stay alive. Um, if I have to plow through a barricade, I'll plow through a barricade. Um, but, but you know why, Doug? Because I've had people like you train me to think that way. You know, one of the things my good friend in Florida does with Florida Department of Law Enforcement, Mark, he I always look at people's license plates. Um, if I see, and you'll see, just start doing it. You'll see an expired tag. Well, not everybody who has an expired tag. There's always mom, mom, soccer mom who forgot to renew her tags. But overall, if you see expired tags, that says something about the people in that car. And you'd be surprised when you start paying attention to how many expired tags there are driving around. You'll see them all the time. And that tells you something about the people. It, it's, a, it's, again, it's what they call the patterns of life. You start to develop, you know, around you, you look at people and you develop the patterns of life. You said you did it. You can write basically a profile by just watching people for a few minutes, the way they carry themselves, their manner of dress, just so many different things. You could you could write a profile on that person. Um, and, and we really need to start thinking that way so that we can protect our families. Yeah. It takes me about maybe 10 seconds and I'll know where you're carrying your gun at if you're carrying one. Everybody yeah. moves a certain way when they're carrying a gun. You know, uh, and, you know, once again, with our course, we, we teach you way more than just going through a doorway and a hallway. We teach you, uh, I mean, 30 years worth of experience between me and Jamie. You know what it is that we always looked at in combat and in law enforcement. I think that's one of the unique perspectives that we have uh, as instructors now. And, uh, you know, I just want to close this by letting people know, you know, um, Law enforcement is not going to be there for you when when you need it. I, I love my law enforcement. I'm a supporter of law enforcement until the day I die. Actual, real law enforcement, not this corruption that we see from our government. Uh, but I want to say this, you know, you're going to have to learn to self-rescue. You are your own first responder. If you don't get the training, you will you're not going to rise to the occasion you're going to fall to the last bit of training that you had, and that will be your reactionary time. 
Uh, I wish we had more women in this first course, but I hope we have more women show up in the next one. Women are the the most, uh, you know, probably attacked people in America, statistically wise. And out of the last active shooters in 2021, 61 of them, 60 of them were men, one was a woman. But on the complete reverse side of the victims, most were women. And then the latter half were men that were the victims. Now, when you look at opportunities, the opportunities, always women. Sexual, yeah. The rate of sexual assault in this country is just skyrocketing right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so women learn how to protect yourself. It's, it's there. Um, the, the assets are there to learn. Um, they're available, uh, you know, and, and I, I think we've got some good things going on. Um, take advantage of it. You know, while you can still get food in your home, get food in your home, while you can still store water, store water. Um, you know, we're going to do that night vision course. You're going to need night vision to do it. I think it is. I think night vision is up on there with a tier one in level of importance. It's expensive. But if you don't have the ability to see at night, you're going to be greatly restricted at night because, you know, 12 hours, that's night. You're not going to know what's going on. You're going to go outside and you can maybe do some things. But anybody that had a night vision, even a cheap one against somebody who doesn't, you're just going to be absolutely cannon fodder to those people. You're going to be easy pickings, the low hanging fruit on the tree. That's what you want. On the next course, like I said, we're going to do nighttime shooting within the shoot house. I, I would like to see if we could uh, borrow a pair of night vision for people just to do a walkthrough. Yeah. And, we and, can do that. And, I mean, you talk about, I, I've used it for two, I use it for too many years. I know how good night vision is. And when I was using night vision, we only had one. It was a, you know, green PVS 14, you know, give you a headache within an hour of wearing the dang thing. And that technology is way more surpassed and, and way better to use and more reliable uh, than whenever I was first given it. So, you know, uh, if you have anything um, prepping wise, give Bob Griswold a call, visit ready-made resources. If you want to talk with Bob about training, about prepping, uh, even about how to purchase a, uh, a, a set of night vision, give him a call, walk that through, talk with Bob. He's one of the best experts in the industry right now at, at helping people prepare. And, you know, Bob, I want to tip my hat to you. A lot of people will call you just to have the comfort of knowing that you're actually there. You're a real person to speak with because those people will email me. Hey, I actually just called Bob. He's actually a really nice guy. You know, he, he is <laughs> what, he, what he says he is. And, uh, you know, there's no pressure. There's no hassle. There's, there's none of that. Uh, and, you know, same for me in my course. You know, uh, there's no yelling. Did we do any yelling? Was there any in in people's faces we don't do that type of stuff uh, the, the only yelling there was was we people were yelling pretend like victims tell me you know i'm the hurting you know mm-hmm. that type of thing you know and because it's a distracting element and if you're in a real active shooter you know you might have those people screaming at you clawing at your legs to help you but as you pointed out you know you've got to walk over those people and stop the threat because as long as that threat's going on you, the body counts going up neutralize the threat the ems people behind you that can take care of those wounded people. But, you know, it, it's a mindset. I've got to end this threat. I have to end the threat. And I, I think people walked away with that. Uh, a real, real thing. Uh, they, I have to end the threat. And it could be it could be in a school. It could be a teacher in a school that's armed. It could be you at Walmart that's armed. And, you know, I, I was in a restaurant today, or, you know, getting lunch. And I saw a mom with a little baby. And I'm just thinking, what would I do if something happened here? You know, would I be brave enough to defend that little child? And I hope I would be, you know, um, using a body shield to defend that little life um, against some nutbag who'd want to end that life. You know, Uh, would I be brave enough to do that? And, you know, I just pray to God I would be able to do that one day. You know, if that ever came came to that, to protect that mother and that child. Um, You know, it just, that's the way I look when I walk into a restaurant. In fact, as you were leaving, you know, I stole this tactical seat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know you would have taken it. I got there first. So I, ha- I, my, Roxanne and I sat at the seats that faced the door so we could see uh, any threat coming in. Now, it looked like there was a wedding party coming and going over there. But I tell you what, I was analyzing everybody walking in and out that door, you know, doing a threat assessment on them. Um, you know, as, as we were sitting there at the airport, at the Hilton, you know, at the restaurant, 
um, you know, right before you guys left, I was doing a threat assessment. Everybody walking in through that door, um, coming in and out, just seeing, you know, if something looked fishy or out of out of normal. Um, and most of them were some kind of wedding party, whatever it was, might have been a graduation wedding party, whatever. But, you know, just making that threat assessment. I wasn't sitting there with my head buried in my phone. I was looking at the door, looking who's coming, who's going, keeping my head on a swivel, looking around. We were cracking up a little bit of jokes, but, you know, just having a good time with guys. And my wife had to endure it. But um, but we were all I think you were probably doing the same thing, just and, and, you know, keeping our environment like radar going on, just making sure it was a safe environment. And then if it did turn unsafe, you know, what to do, you know, action beats reaction. If I react, I can act, I'll save my life. So um, anyhow, I, I think that's it. Oh, by, by the way, if you want to call and talk to me, my phone number is 800 627 3809. I will gladly talk with you. We had a guy came in the store today and I spent an hour or so with him, a little over an hour. He wanted a, some education on comms communication. And I was showing him just different things you can do, different radios and what they do, how to how to set up a network so that when uh, our communication network goes down, which I'm convinced it will, you'll be able to still talk with all your friends. You'll still be able to communicate and bring that security that force of numbers brings. You know, like that lady, if, if they've been jogging four or five women together, probably nothing would have happened. You know, um, you know, even four or five women, it's probably athletic if they're running, you know, they could have, you know, probably fended that guy off. They might've gotten hurt, but still fended him off. But one person alone is a target of opportunity. And two people, three people, four people, uh, that becomes less and less a target of opportunity. And, you know, we have to live in a society that there are many, many predators out there right now looking for targets of opportunity, whether it's to steal your money or, you know, for a woman to steal her virtue or whatever it is. There are people out there right now, today, I would say there are many people listening to this program that were profiled and didn't even know they were profiled. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the last... Sobering. The last most recent active shooters, uh, especially those that happen in Buffalo, New York, you know, they walked right beside a uh, an active shooter the day prior and didn't know it. And that guy spent three hours around that store in the parking lot inside the store was confronted by the security guards. Why he had a, he said in his in his uh, uh, statement that he had to kill him first because he knew he was going to you know interrupt the uh, the mass murder. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's the reason why we we do what we do, ladies and gentlemen. It's the reason why we take it very serious. It's a very somber conversation. Uh, you know, the only thing I can say is train, prep, and pray. Uh, you don't have to get training by me, but at least get training by somebody. I I do strongly recommend that people carry their firearms legally. Mm -hmm. Legally carry your firearms, and I would tell people to conceal carry if you can. If you don't conceal carry, don't worry about it. At least you got a gun on you. Um, you know, we're living in a day of age where things are only going to get more violent and the stats prove it. So Bob, thank you for coming on, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, stay, stay, uh, stay in the fight, stay ready, especially getting your medical training. I would tell you that medical training, communications, training, firearms and tactics training, that is your, uh, your training order. Stick to those things. You can get a lot of that at uh, ready-made resources with Bob Griswold. Bob, you got any closing words? Yeah, that's it. But again, if you want to call, um, you know, 800-627-3809, we have a pretty adequate supply of night vision in stock. Um, I have a pretty good supply of radios in stock, and uh, we have lots of food, water filters, all that stuff is in stock, homesteading, just a lot of things. If you need stuff, that's all I have. I'm Train right, pray, 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 get your heart right with God, seek the Lord Jesus Christ while he can be found, and then just realize that woman who was murdered was a Christian woman. It can happen. It does happen to good people. And that's grieving. It's very grieving. I just, I mean, it breaks my heart to think of those two children growing up without their mommy. Yeah. You know, it's grieving. Yeah. Take so. your life into your own hands, people. Train, prep, pray. 
stay frosty the enemies out there yep. thanks for watching